what's going on guys welcome back into the channel today um today i want to talk a little bit about why cap space is going to matter a whole lot more in madden 20 um why it doesn't matter much in madden 19 uh or not as much and things that you're going to be able to do and you can start doing right now and practicing right now in order to um save yourself some cap space in madden 20 so first things first we're going to have to jump into a uh, franchise mode here and i'm just going to start a cloud franchise we're going to join in and delete that game we're going to join in as the lions because i have a good example of um why we need to do what we need to do and so we're going to start off we're just going to start off with the real life roster it's fine it doesn't matter what roster we start off with and we'll start off you know what i'm just going to start off in the middle of the season because i think that that will be uh just fine for us but we're going to start up as the lions in order to show you guys some of the errors that go on in Madden 19 that are supposedly going to be corrected in Madden 20. So we're just going to go ahead and start playing as is um, and jump right into it. So the first big thing that hasn't been corrected in Madden 19 and hasn't been corrected in Madden in a long time that supposedly they have corrected in Madden 20 is contracts. They've added some detail to the contracts. They've finally added, uh, I guess... I guess they added some types of like options and stuff to the contract. I'm not sure exactly what they added to the contracts, but they made them mirror real life contracts more. And the contract values are supposedly um, going to be more accurate. Now, a lot of this information is coming from my buddy Walking Visions. Go check out his channel on YouTube, uh, also known as Tyler uh, or T Malt. Go ahead and uh, give him a shout out or, or watch a video on his channel. Give him a like, thumbs up, something like that. But. Um, so credit to him for pointing out this information. But if you go ahead and look at the salaries for players in um, Madden 19, you'll notice that a lot of the contracts, especially for big name players, aren't correct. Um, and what I mean by that is like you can see a clear issue up at the top of the screen right above where I'm scrolled. It says cap space. 45 million and that's the case for just about every team they have 30 to 40 million dollars in cap space or more to work with and that's just flat out not true i know personally this pittsburgh steelers they're listed as having 27 million cap space but they're always working this is just a personal example from me knowing they're always working with like two to three million dollars in excess cap space by the time the season rolls around and so it's very clear to me uh, uh, and it should be clear to you guys that the cap space and the salary, the, the salaries for players are not correct in Madden 19. And, and part of the issue I've talked about this on the channel before is that that creates an issue for off season. It creates an issue for AI teams and everything like that. And it creates an issue for users too, because what ends up happening is really good teams are able to still spend a ton of money on free agents and make their teams even better. So say you had somebody or an AI in the franchise playing as the chiefs. I know that they don't have this much cap space, but even though they're going to be one of the top teams in Madden 20, in Madden 19, for example, they would have still been able to go out and sign a couple 90 overall plus players or some of the really big name free agents um, and have no bones about it because you have all your players locked up and you have money to spend. And so that has supposedly been fixed in Madden 20. And that's why salary cap is going to matter a whole lot more in Madden 20 and you're going to really need to know the ins and outs of some things in order to be able to actually utilize the salary cap the way that you want and kind of free up salary cap space now i'm just going to show you guys some of the ways that i go about it and first i want to show you guys a good example of why the salaries are incorrect so if you pull up i'll even give you guys the opportunity to pull up matt stafford's contract on spot track matt stafford makes an average on spot track uh, per year salary of 27 million dollars and the reason that you know that this is incorrect in the game is because when you go over to his um, contract in game he's making an average of 18.6 million dollars which is almost 10 million dollars less than what he's making per year in real life um, now they do have this kind of backloaded but the, the contract nonetheless is not correct for matt stafford this is a prorated contract it's different each year and i believe it might be backloaded or it's front loaded one or the other 
But the short of the story is, is in Madden, they don't have backloaded or front-loaded contracts or anything of the sort, and they don't, the devs, when they make the roster, they don't program the correct salary amount in here. Now, they might program the correct salary amount by pr plugging in the bonus, but the way that Madden 19 treats the bonus is it's all signed up front at the beginning of the contract, and they don't treat it as if it is a prorated bonus given out each year. They give it out as, if you sign a player to a $40 million bonus, you're paying out that $40 million at the beginning, and that's just not how it works. It's a signing bonus, but it's divvied out over the course of these years, and so the average salary should be $27 million for Matt Stafford, but that that doesn't take into effect, and that's why you have so much cap space in this game. Um, and in Madden 20, like I said multiple times already, that's not supposedly going to be the case. The contracts are going to be accurate, and so you should have less cap space to work with. You should have realistic cap numbers to work with, and for a lot of teams, that's going to mean a big difference, okay? Now, let me take a breath. We're going to go ahead and teach you guys how exactly I go through determining which players to cut and how to free up cap space. So number one, the first and most important way to free up cap space is by trading players. You're not going to uh, suffer any penalty by trading away a player. And so see I have $45 million in cap space and I'm on the hook for $7.47 million in terms of cap space for Damon Harrison. Uh, senior and so if i went ahead and traded him away what's going to happen is i'm going to free up seven million dollars in cap space and i'm not going to take any penalty for it however if i were to release him i would only free up a net cap space of roughly one million dollars and the way that works is i will free up his salary ca his salary cap this one shows 5.87 million so maybe it's slightly under his seven million or whatever that he's making uh but we also incur a penalty for releasing him on that deal of 4.8 million dollars and we pay that out to him um and so we only free up a net of one million dollars in cap space but let's see if i went ahead and traded harrison um Sorry, I have to fix the setting because I started in week 11 and not before the trade deadline. So I'll fix that real quick and put the trade deadline off. And then I'll go ahead and trade him away. So if I go to my salaries again, and this is a this is a screen that you guys are going to get want to get real familiar with. I'm not sure exactly what the, the layout is going to be in Madden 20, but you're going to want to get real familiar with instead of looking at the roster screen or the depth chart or anything like that, look at your team through the salary screen because it's going to matter a lot more and you're going to need to manage this stuff and you're going to get frustrated if you're not keeping control of your players' contracts. Now, if I go ahead and and trade him away and it doesn't matter what for so we were at what 45 million dollars in cap space we'll trade him away just for the sake of argument we'll trade him away for whatever just to make it nice quick and easy and then I should show up with a cap space of 50.3. Okay, so we don't you don't gain the full salary back, but you don't take the penalty. So if we would have cut him, we would have only gone up to $46 million in cap space. But by trading him away, we maximized our cap space return there. We got five extra, over $5 million in cap space by trading him away and getting that salary off the books. Now... That's the number one easiest way to clear cap space and save yourself some money. But what happens if players aren't tradable or maybe your league doesn't allow trades or anything like that? Option number two is to release players. And uh, the way that you're going to be able to determine who you want to release, this is a kind of an art that not a lot of people understand, is you want to go to the salary screen and compare their overall grade versus the amount of money that they are making. And so what you can start to see here very quickly is I have three of my best players are making somewhere around five, six, or seven million dollars. However, my fourth best player in terms of overall is making 19 million dollars, and so is my fifth best player. And so something seems off about that. Why would your fourth and fifth best player be making that much money? Well, Maybe they're a slightly overpaid or, or whatever your argument might be. Maybe you sign them to a bad contract or the team signed them to a bad contract or it's a quarterback, so they get paid more. 
regardless of what the reasoning is, the idea that you want to be thinking is, is that overall worth that amount of money? If I can get an 86 for $6 million, why do I want an 83 for $17.5 million? And so wait, that's number that's step number one, because then you get to determine who you want to trade away or release or whatever it might be. That's really important. Now, the other thing that you want to consider is the bonus money. And this one is actually slightly easier to look at through the roster screen, but the lower the bonus money, the less the penalty is going to be for releasing a player. So I believe if I go to release Ezekiel Ansa because he has a zero bonus, I'm going to free up that entire amount of cap space and take no penalty in return for that. And the easiest way to, to, to see this actually is to bear with me here. You can either go in and click on each player or from the roster screen it specifically shows you the penalty for releasing a player it shows you the penalty incurred and so you can do it from this screen as well what would the penalty be if i released a specific player well ezekiel ansa is a good player don't get me wrong but can you replace an 83 overalls production and save 17 million dollars in cap space to spend on someone else or to trade for somebody else that has a contract that's maybe more worth it hell yeah you can do that so in my opinion i'm looking for players like this that are their overall is way lower than the money that they're spending, and I'm not going to incur a lot of cap penalty for releasing them. And so if I release Ezekiel Ansa, though you might want to keep him on the team, if you need cap space, this is an ideal guy because he's getting up there in age and uh, not a very high overall, but he's making an, uh, an insane amount of money compared to what his overall actually is and what his overall could potentially be for you in the future. He's not worth $17.5 million dollars and if you need cap space, which is highly likely in Madden 20 because they fix caps, go ahead and cut a guy like Ezekiel Ansa, and then you'll save all of that $17 million in cap space um, by doing that very easily. And then you can go down the list and look at what the cap penalties would be for players if you were to cut them. And so you can start to see very quickly and easily, you know, who's going to save you money and who's not, who's earning more money than they're really worth. And if you go down, this is where you start to get into players that are probably making more money than they should for a lot of teams. If you get down into the seventies and you see people making multi-million dollar deals, you're probably looking at players that are being overpaid that you can cut and save some amount of cap space on. Now this team doesn't seem to have a whole lot of them. Um, because there aren't a ton of bad contracts down here in the lower overalls. But I know that there are some other teams in the leagues where you get down into like the 70s and there are players that are making really bad contracts. Um, let me see if I can scroll through and just kind of find a couple, for example. I'm sure we'll be able to find some in here somewhere. Panthers, maybe. Yeah, so like a good a good example here would be Tory Smith or Ryan Khalil. These guys are patu. But when you consider what their overall is, they're 78 and 77, and it's not very good. I mean, that's decent quality, but not very good. You could save a lot of money by cutting a guy like this, and I'm sure you could bring in a comparable player for quite a bit cheaper. I mean, how much production are you really going to get out of a 78 overall wide receiver or a 77 overall center? I could go to free agency right now and find players that are uh, similar overall, but I could pay a lot less money. So say so I go to free agency, or maybe I even have backups on my team that are worth giving a shot as opposed to spending all that money on guys that aren't really worth the money. I could go to center or O-line, and I'm sure there's somebody. Like, I could sign... Uh, Nico Saragusa, who's a young player with some potential for $120,000. That sounds a hell of a lot better to me. Or, or this, I guess it's saying $2.5 million. That's a hell of a lot better to me than paying $6 million for a guy that's slightly better. And, and that's kind of a bit of a, a stretch example, but most of the time you're going to have better players available here for less money. If you want a veteran presence like Khalil is, 
guy same age, only slightly less overall, get the guy that's worth $2 million and cut the guy that's going to give you $4 million extra in cap space. And then you have that freedom to use it at other positions. And so these are the considerations that I want you guys to figure out whenever you're talking about uh, the roster and your salary cap in Madden 20. Because like I said, I want to reiterate, it's really important that you focus on how to save cap space. In Madden 20, uh, and you can start doing it in Madden 19 because they have supposedly fixed the contracts. And when they fix the contracts, that means a lot of teams are going to have a lot less cap space than they do in Madden. Like I said, when we scrolled through here, you don't see a lot of teams having very little cap space. I mean, you look through here, the lowest I've seen so far is 17 million for the Rams, and I believe that's not even correct. You're looking at 40, 50 million for every single team. Uh, and 25. Okay, so the lowest number is for the Vikings, uh, and they still have 10 million to spend. That's at least one really good player. And you're looking at 40, 80 million for the Bills. I'm sure that's not totally incorrect, but I mean, when you when you really think about it, it really screws up franchises. It screws up the offseason because teams are signing players that they shouldn't really have the money to be able to sign because the contracts aren't correct in Madden 19. And so in Madden 20, that is supposedly fixed. That's the information I'm hearing. Um, get used to saving cap space and find your own ways to save cap space. Like I said, you can get rid of guys by trading, and that's the easiest way to save cap space. And don't be afraid to take a loss on a player. Like, say that I have somebody that I think is being overpaid too much. Say I'm looking at... You know, maybe I'm looking at TJ Lang and I think he's making too much money for what his overall dictates. Maybe I'll trade him away at a little bit of a loss just to get the cap space off of my books. And then I have cap space to sign somebody else to replace him or I have cap space to sign multiple players as opposed to overpaying an older guy that has a lower overall than what he's really worth. And then in addition to that, you can cut players determined uh, based on what their, their bonus or their uh, salary cap penalty is for cutting them and free up cap space. So you definitely want to pay attention to those numbers. Um, and I think that'll help you guys out in the long run. And uh, certainly you want to get used to looking at a salary cap, uh, a salary screen or a salary cap screen. I'm not sure exactly what it will look like in Madden 20, but there will be a screen like this and you're going to want to get used to looking at it. I know that a lot of people are just in it to play it, but this is part of the game. This is part of football. And you got to get used to it if you expect to be competitive in leagues because you're going to end up with bad contracts. And if you're not paying attention to this, your team's going to be a whole lot worse than everybody else that knows how to manage their team and knows how to manage cap space. So I hope this helped you guys out and uh, maybe gave you some ideas of what you can do to manage salary cap because it is going to be more important in Madden 20, supposedly. I don't 100% believe it because they haven't fixed the salary caps up to uh, the salaries up to this point. Hopefully they did actually fix it, but I'm holding my breath a little bit. Um, if it is fixed, you guys need to know these tips and you need to know how to manage your salary cap because it's going to be a big, big deal in Madden 20 whenever you're playing franchise modes and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If you did, leave a like, uh, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to check that comment real quick, and then I'm going to sign off. Uh, shout out to Walk... Sorry, hopefully you can hear my microphone. Shout out to Walking Visions. He is the one that relayed that information to me, by the way. I, I, I know I shouted him out early in the video. But he's the one that relayed the information to me that supposedly they're fixing the contracts this year in the Madden, uh, in Madden, so in Madden 20. So um, hopefully what he says is correct, and some of the other information I'm seeing is correct. Uh, but like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this helped you out. If it did, leave me some feedback, and I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. See ya.